The brand new 2024 Lenovo Legion 7i Slim is here in front of me. I fell in love with this laptop at CES 2024 in Las Vegas. This year they did drop that Slim moniker, so it's just called the 7i, uh, but it's basically an iteration of last year's laptop. So it's gonna be using a very, very similar chassis with some tweaks, and it's gonna have some updates to last year's platform, but overall it's based on the 7i Slim from last year. If you watch my channel, you know that I called the AMD and Intel models of this last year in 2023, my favorite laptops of the year. I stand by that. Doesn't mean that they were the best laptop, because it's hard to measure what is the best laptop. They were the best for me, and they were certainly my favorite. But this laptop here, they took all the things that I loved about it last year, kept those in there, and then they upgraded the things that I really needed to see to really put this laptop on top. First of all, Glacial White here is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that's an objective fact. I'm not just being subjective here. It is a gorgeous laptop. You may prefer the gunmetal style of it, but you can't deny the appeal of this white laptop here. Okay, so we'll look at the specification options here. So you can see there's two CPU options, an i7-14700HX and an i9-14900HX. In this model here, I have the i9-14900HX. I think either would be very suitable for this chassis. To be honest, in some cases, the 14700 might perform just as well due to the size of the laptop. So really just get whichever is. We have a 4060 and a 4070. Uh, once again, they're going to perform relatively similar. In this model here, I do have the 4060. The one you pick, I say, would be based on price. If there's a huge gap between them, I mean, pick whatever's cheaper. Otherwise, if the 4070 isn't a big price jump, you might as well go for it. Uh, you get two sticks of DDR5 RAM in this one here. It does run at 5600 megahertz this year. That's quite nice. You can get up to 32 gigabytes. This model has 32 gigabytes. And then you can see here you can get 5, 12 gigabytes of storage or one terabyte. This one has one terabyte. And then lastly, you can get two different screen options. You can get a 1600p screen. It's a 500 nit 240 hertz refresh rate. Very nice. 100% sRGB. Great for gaming. That's the one that I have on this model here. And then you can get an even higher resolution 3.2K screen. Not quite as bright, but still very, very bright. Not quite as high refresh rate, but still very high refresh rate. And then on this one here, you do get 100% DCIP. So it's a little bit more suitable for creative use. Uh, if you're gonna be doing the creative tasks, I'd probably lean you towards the 3.2K screen due to that higher color space. Still fantastic for gaming because you can still use DLSS. The 1600p screen is a little bit better for gaming purposes because it's not quite as many pixels for the GPU to push. Uh, of course, it is a little bit brighter if that really matters. And it also does have HDR, which can be important for some people. And here's a look at the laptop. You can see there it's got this gorgeous glacial white there, right? It's actually really nice for fingerprints. There's actually a lot of fingerprints on here, but you can't see them. Like maybe if I get some light, there's one. Can you see that? Uh, I've been actually doing a comparison on this laptop to the uh, to two other Lenovo Legion. So I've been handling this laptop for two days. Um, and it's just really nice for not showing fingerprints. One of the benefits of white. So it's got this really beautiful, uh, almost pearlescent ceramic style uh, white coating here. It's glacial white is what they call it. It's just an absolutely gorgeous laptop, right? Gorgeous. It's got the same form factor as last year. You get that cut metal, nice and thin, right? It's about as thin as a MacBook Pro 16 inch. So it may look like a gigantic gaming laptop and it is a gaming laptop, but it also is gonna be nice and portable like a MacBook 16 inch Pro. And of course, this is not designed only for gamers. This is a hybrid use laptop. You can tell that because it has things like the SD card. This is a perfect laptop for someone like me who wants to play games, but also wants to do creative work and also wants something that is relatively portable, but still has lots of power. So let's look at the ports here. You'll notice that there are some differences this year. So we get the SD card on the right there, our first USB-C, a USB-A on the back there, microphone, camera, kill switch and then on the left side another USB-A two more USB-C one of them being Thunderbolt microphone headphone combo jack there and then on the back is where the changes are so you can see here last year there was IO across the back there this year we get HDMI and we get power I'm gonna bring in another laptop when we look at the back here so you can see here that on this uh, 2024 Legion 5 Pro there's more IO in the back right so you get all these different IOs on the back there. Last year, 
the uh, 7 Slim was similar. It actually had I.O. along the back there. They got rid of that this year and they have this kind of grate here. They still have the ones that you want to be on the back, power in and HDMI. You don't want power in and HDMI on the sides. That's really annoying when you have these big power cords and HDMI cables coming off. So it's nice that those still stay on the back, but they actually killed off the I.O. there. Now the I.O. is not gone, it's just moved. So there's more I.O. on the sides this year than there was last year. So they're not losing anything. They're just moving some of that there. And you'll see when we open up this laptop why I think they did it. You can see here that it's a relatively slim laptop. So this is a 5 Pro right here, 2024. Uh, I don't know if that will show up well on camera, uh, but there's definitely a lot more height on that laptop there. Right? If I raise these up here to the camera, you can see there just how much thicker the uh, 5 Pro is considerably thicker. Let's put them on here, especially in the front. You'll actually notice they taper off quite a bit. So you can see on camera, that is quite a bit thicker on the front there. The backs are you know, also thicker on here as well. The whole laptop is, but definitely you lose out. Uh, you definitely get some slimness in the front there, which is really nice. Uh, from the top down, they're all the same. So it's not some super, super, super light laptop, uh, but it definitely is light. So we'll look at grams there. 2200, so we're 2300 grams. That's about five pounds which is good for a gaming laptop. That's all metal chassis, right? Uh, the charger here, you can see, not exactly tiny. It's not gigantic either. This is the you know proprietary charger. You can actually charge these over USB-C uh, and you can get 100 watts normally, or if you have a Lenovo proprietary USB, you can see you can get up to 140. That puts it at uh, you know, over six pounds. It's a fairly heavy charger here. So you can see how much of a difference that makes. Let's look at the inside now. Obviously the outside is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at that. I've already turned this laptop on, obviously. I've done testing compared to other laptops, to the other legions. Um, so, you know, there's not like, this is, I already have used it a little bit, um, which is nice. Actually, I've used it for over a day. Absolutely gorgeous laptop. Look at that. The little button style has changed there, but it's the same thing. You get fingerprint biometric log in there, uh, your camera up top there, numpad here, full-size keyboard, Lenovo Legion keyboard. So it's S tier basically glass trackpad, beautiful internals, nice RGB. And the RGB actually looks nice on the white, I think, personally. It pops a little bit, so it's really, really nice. We'll actually kill the light. You can see there just how nice that RGB looks on that white chassis. Just a really nice laptop. So, you know, I think the Australians got this in white last year, I think. I could be wrong if there's any Australians uh, watching. Let me know if that's true or not. And I was like super jealous, because I love, you know, white electronics. It's just kind of a thing. I just love them. And uh, this was my favorite laptop of last year. And it comes in white now. So I wonder where this review is gonna go. Let's start off here uh, with looking at the internals. We'll cut to my footage from that. Typically to get inside one of these laptops, you're gonna wanna use a little guitar pick. And I pull back like that and I kind of creak in. I'll pull it off camera for a second. These ones are actually much easier to get into than the 7 Pro or the 5. So I basically just put that in there and then I just just comes off. Uh, so the 7 uh, here, 7i here, also known as the 7 Slim last year, is was the easiest to get into by far. So that comes off there. Let's have a look at the lid. Lots of, there's your intakes there, some structure, a little bit different than last year, you'll see later. Uh, you get dual NVMe on these as well. So you get a heat, you get a, a thermal pad there, thermal pad there. That's a little foam for structure. Looks good. Metal, right? Nice metal bottom. Not as thin as the, uh, like the Yoga, 9i Yoga. Uh, you have a pro, I mean, sorry. This is actually a thicker plastic, which is good. And here is a look at the laptop. Finally, I get to look inside the seven. So the ports there have moved from the back there. They moved all that portage there, basically. Big speakers on this. This is the seven, one of the seven lineups. The sevens always have good speakers. Uh, we'll see how they'll sound, but I'm assuming they're gonna sound pretty good. You don't have the metal heat sinks like the uh, seven pro, but you do get the uh, thermal pads on the actual bottom of the laptop, which is a big piece of metal. So the whole thing is a heat sink. First SSD here, that should be SK, yeah, SK Hynix, good fast SSD there. Second SSD there on the left, looking good. You get your Wi-Fi there, upgradable. We'll look at the speed of that later. Uh, you get your RAM underneath this cool thing, which is now zigzag, zigzagged this year. Go like that, pull that off. Two sticks of RAM in there, and this should run nice and fast because 14th gen Intel runs faster than 13th gen Intel, 
which ran faster than 12th gen. So now that we're at 14th gen here, we should be getting up to 5,600 megahertz. So you can upgrade this if need be though. And then your cooling solution here is nice. You actually get three heat pipes all together. So you get uh, three coming out of the left side there, two coming out of the right there. Lots of uh, path for VRMs there being cooled as well. They use PTM7950 on this, not thermal paste, so it should run relatively cool over there. Nice, huge fans on it. You can see big diameter on the fans there. They are relatively thick. Basically, a lot of thickness of the laptop actually comes from the battery. Nice upgradability with two RAM and two NVMe. Last year, this laptop only had one RAM stick. It had soldered to the motherboard, uh, 16 gigabytes, and then you can put on a single stick. So if you watch my, my review of that laptop, uh, you'll notice that there's only one RAM stick there. This year it has dual sodium. That's a big upgrade, and I think that is probably partially why they moved this I.O. up here. You move the I.O. up here, you can move this heat pipe up slow, slightly, and then you give yourself physically enough room to put in two uh, sodium sticks there. So now you can put in two of the exact same sticks. So, you know, it comes with good memory here already, which is fine. But if you want to upgrade this in the future, you can stick in two more RAM sticks in there rather than putting in one and hopefully that runs at, you know, properly with the motherboards. Uh, that's, I, I assume personally why that they would move this up here so they can shift up the cooling solution slightly, get two sodium sticks in there. So this year, excellent upgrade. Uh, you know, you get up to 10 out of 10 in terms of like an upgradability rating. You get Wi-Fi 1, you get NVMe 1, NVMe 2, Wi-Fi upgradable and dual sodium in there as well. So very nice looking laptop inside. Super happy with this one. Okay, so that's the internals there. This model here, there's different specifications, you know, like I went through the intro, uh, you can see what it is. This is i9 14900 hx uh, that's good. So let's have a look at the keyboard here. It's the Lenovo Legion keyboard. Uh, that means it's good by default. So, I mean, by default, we know right now that this, I'm gonna be a huge fan of this keyboard. The other thing about this keyboard though is compared to some of the other ones like the 5 series, the 5 series is not quite as nice. It's still nice, but it's not as nice. These are just such snappy keys. Let's give a quick type here. Yep, so uh, S plus tier keyboard, uh, 11 out of 10 keyboard. Um, I think it's the best keyboard that you can get on a laptop. Uh, these here, they're thin keycaps, but they do still have tons of travel. Um, it's kind of a perfect compromise between a thin laptop and like a thick laptop. You're gonna get a ton of travel on here. They're super snappy. This keyboard deck here has like negative flex. There's no flex on it. It's all metal, right? These here are metal chassis on the bottom, top, and the keyboard deck. Unlike the 7 Pro, unlike the 5 Pro, the Slims, this is the ones that have the all metal chassis, so it's very premium. Per key RGB, you can see here is really nice. Uh, let's come in here to Vantage software. You can come down here and you can see all of the different RGB modes. So you can actually dim here. So you can get off, one, two, three. So you get three steps plus off. Here you can go finer and you can go in between. Uh, so you get an extra step if you use the slider. You get six profiles, which I think is one more than last year. All different effects here, it's you know per key. So right now it's blue apparently. You know, I can make it pink that doesn't quite look that good purple probably look good kind of like that just a clean light purple that's uh yeah it doesn't show up on camera to me it's purple on the camera it's not but anyways anyways uh that's profile two so i can save that profile one is you know the rainbow thing so you know you can use whatever you want you can make your own you can come in and switch one key at a time make that thing do something else all kinds of cool stuff here you can do so it's a glass trackpad so surprise surprise it's glorious this is a nice kind of ceramic feel then you come on here and it's a glass trackpad it's very smooth to the touch it'll be less likely to get wear patterns on it less likely to get grimy and the click is really nice so so far we're at a 10 out of 10 for all the inputs here so you can come in here and you can do GPU overclocking. Let's see what you can add here. 200 megahertz and 400 megahertz to the two uh, there. If you leave it on hybrid, which you need to do, then you can come in here and go to this display mode. And now you can do it with advanced Optimus. So you can go Optimus, which is iGPU only. So your uh, integrated graphics, which will be fine for generic tasks like easily. You can drive even 4K displays, whatever, you'll be fine. Uh, the other thing you can do in here is you can go to NVIDIA only GPU. So if you're doing pure gaming tasks, it's a good idea to go to the NVIDIA only GPU. 
because it will get a little bit more power there, but you can you know, do like that there. x rite allows you, it's, these are color calibrated uh, screens here. So Lenovo actually has like color profiles. This is it down here. You come in here and there's different modes in here, right? Default, um, let's see, apparently dims when you do that at first. So that's default, you can go to sRGB, you know, not calibrated, whatever, but it's a calibrated screen. So when you download, uh, like a new fresh Windows, you're gonna wanna reinstall x right here. This screen here is a 1600p screen. It comes with two options. This one here has the 1600p screen. Uh, there's two options on this laptop. You can get the 1600p, which has 100% sRGB. Great screen, great colors, nice and vibrant. Uh, Advanced Optimus, blah, 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 blah. If you're gonna be doing pure gaming on this laptop and that's your primary task, uh, you'll probably wanna get the 1600p screen, I'd say because you're gonna be a little bit easier for the 4060 and the 4070 to push. They also produce that 3.2K screen, which is a higher resolution. It also has better color range. I prefer the 3.2K screen um, because of what I do with these laptops, which is creative tasks. And it's fine with gaming because you can just throw on more DLSS. Like Nvidia is this massive fan of a DLSS scaling. So if they say that it's good enough for us, then I think they're right. Uh, we're gonna go with, uh, you know, this is the 1600p screen, 3.2K is what I would buy if I was buying it personally. I have a comparison of these actually. If you look at my Lenovo ThinkBook 16P video from last year, I compare this laptop here, the last year's model, with a 1600p screen to the ThinkBook, which has the same 3.2K screen you'd find in these laptops. And so you can actually go to that video and I'll put it up here and you can compare the two screens and see what the difference is between them and see which one's best for you. Uh, but if you're just purely gaming on this laptop, I'd probably get the 1600p screen. If you're gonna be doing hybrid use, I'd probably push it towards the 3.2K. That's what I would do. So the red is nice and vibrant here. Uh, if you compare it to the 3.2K screen, you'll notice that the 3.2K screen has a little bit more vibrancy on it. But it's a, oh man, it's such a good screen. Unless they're side by side, you're not gonna notice the difference. It is very vibrant. My iPhone just cannot understand. For some reason, it, it, it freaks out more with vibrant screens, but uh, I will assure you it looks better in person. Uh, you can see here that the blacks are really bold. Bring that down slightly. Um, you know, there's no IPS bloom at all. Nice, nice, nice screen. And the red remains very vibrant. Beautiful. 100% sRGB color space is very good. Nice and vibrant, very crisp. Okay, so we'll do an audio test here. Uh, this is a seven lineup from uh, Lenovo. So the speakers are good. Um, it's gonna get pretty loud. So if you have headphones, you might turn it down. We'll start at 70 and we'll go from there. Normally I can normalize it a bit in post-production, but. Yeah, so they're outstanding. Just like last year, the sevens have incredibly good speakers. You're gonna get this and you're gonna listen to music and you're gonna enjoy it, right? You're gonna get a lot of low end bass, a lot of richness and volume to the music here. Was a Five Nights at Freddy's movie, or at least a movie that kind of resembles Five Nights at Freddy's. Would you like that? No? Well, there is, and it's called Willy's Wonderland. He's pointing at room 303 where Eileen lives, which is pretty scary. But in my opinion, the scariest thing about it is that he appears to have been transformed into a PlayStation 1 model. So it's, yeah, it's crisp. Like every aspect about the audio on this laptop is amazing. And then the visual aspects of it are also amazing. So receiving information, audio and visual from the laptop is fantastic. Inputting into the laptop with the trackpad and the uh, keyboard is also amazing. We'll do some Cinebench runs here just for sound. Uh, we'll put up the scores after, but I just want you guys to hear how this laptop actually sounds acoustically when it's uh, doing some Cinebench in different modes. Okay, so this is the sound on performance mode. Fans are definitely going, obviously. And you can hear just how much quieter it is on balance mode here. Let's throw it into quiet mode here, which will really pull watts away from the CPU, so it should get a fair bit quieter. At this point, I think my floor fan might be noisier than the laptop. Yeah, the laptop is actually quieter than the fan. That's 
my vent that's behind it. And here are a look at some benchmarks. So we did three runs of Cinebench here. The first one on the left here is in silent mode. You can see here that we're getting a pretty good score, 18,000 or so. That's actually really good considering we're on silent mode. Then the middle one here is performance mode. Obviously there's a big jump in performance there, 21,000 or so. Also very good. And then we went with full performance mode here and you can see that we're getting up to about 24,000 or so on performance mode. So that's very good out of this 14900HX. Obviously if we did have a thicker chassis with improved cooling like the 9i Pro or the 7i Pro, you'd get slightly better performance here. Uh, we do get a little bit of throttling at the beginning, but then the fans tend to just kick up basically and then you get pretty good stable performance there. In terms of the SSD here, you can see it's a very high-end Gen 4 drive, SK Hynix here. We're getting over 7,000 for reads and 6,500 for writes. Very good. And then you can see here for battery life. So the first test here was done on idle with 100% brightness. I don't ever turn that down. However, we are at 60 hertz refresh rate. And then you can see here that the battery life is actually pretty good on idle. It's giving us about seven hours, seven and a half hours, somewhere around there, uh, just idle, which isn't terrible considering that this is an Intel 14 Gen i9 processor. So really not that bad with that considered. And then you can see here that I did some 1080p YouTube. I just basically watched for a little while here. We're at 91% here and it's giving us around four hours or so, maybe four to five hours, I say, of YouTube. So also pretty good, all things considered. I mean, we have that very large 99.9 .9 watt hour battery, Intel, very high end i9 processor, but all things considered for the power in this laptop, we are getting pretty good battery life here. And then lastly here, we just have the Wi-Fi, which is obviously very good, over 500 upload and download. That's about as fast as my Wi-Fi can go, so very, very quick Wi-Fi here. Here's a look at the built-in webcam. Seems fine, nothing special, but it'll get the job done. If you're just doing meetings, it'll be functional. It's a gaming laptop. Game testing time. We're in Baldur's Gate here. Let's see what we can get with performance. So we'll turn off scaling and we'll throw it on ultra. So ultra native, 1600p that is, in really the most demanding area of the game. We're on performance mode. And uh, you can see here that we're getting, well actually that's good, very good performance, 74. It's quite good. Other areas of the game, you know, earlier, under, underground, etc. I mean, a lot of the game, you're going to be closer to that, you know, 120 FPS. When you come out here, this is really the most, probably the most sustained challenging area in the game. So what I want to do here is test different performance modes just so you guys know what you can do with these 4070s or 4060, whichever you get. So if you throw on silent mode here, you can actually game on silent mode on a 4050, 60, or 70 because they're actually okay with the wattage. You can see that the wattage now dropped down to 45 or so watts from 100 or so. So we're down over 50% wattage and we're still over, uh, still close to 60 in that area here come into these areas and we're up at 60 so right this is how I play Baldur's Gate um, I've played many hours I actually beat this game on a Legion 7 from last year uh, almost from start to finish and uh, I just played on silent mode it's so quiet it the mic actually might exaggerate how noisy the fan is it's basically off yeah quality DLSS look at that huge jump silent mode the laptop is basically the fans are on but you can barely hear them you can see the GP, the uh, CPU, sorry, is at uh, only 75 degrees. That's nothing, and uh, you know we're not really getting too much heat there. You're gonna just generally have really good performance. I'll wait half a day and got nowhere. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, you're gonna get really good performance. Yeah, so there we go, fantastic. Uh, so the, you know, I also wanted to show off those power modes because you can really see what you can do here you can of course you can throw it in performance mode and let the system actually tear you can see now our fps are way up here right okay so here we are in horizon forbidden west we're just in this early area for now i'm doing a bunch of laptop testing so i need to stick around this area and make sure i can do them back to back before i play myself uh but we're at uh, 1600p high just with quality dlss just the latest dlss and just, I want to keep us above 60. And you can see here we are getting above 60. It looks fantastic, especially on this beautiful screen here. It actually looks better in person. For some reason, the camera seems to be under-exaggerating it, but it's a very beautiful looking screen here.
Yeah, look at how great this looks. Uh, let's throw on just a tiny little bit more scaling here, see if we can get it, you know, well above 60 without having to use too much DLSS. DLSS quality I consider, like, literally free. You can't tell it's on. In fact, in most cases, it makes the game look better because it has anti-aliasing. Balanced, usually at 1600p, also looks the same. And that's your 60 right there, easy 60, 65. We yeah. So I don't think we need to do too much testing. I mean, it's going to run fantastic, as you can see here. It's going to look fantastic. It's going to run fantastic. Uh, you need a little bit of DLSS if you're at high, 1600p. I've done a three-way comparison of this laptop to the 7i Pro as well as the 5 Pro. So, I mean, that's going to be a video that's coming out as well. But it's, you know, it's kind of refreshed my understanding of these laptops. And I've actually never had all three of them at the same time, at one given time. So, what do I think of this laptop? Well, I mean, it's fantastic. Let's just be straightforward. This laptop last year was my favorite of the year last year. Whether it was Intel or AMD, it just depended on what you wanted to get out of it. Uh, this is the Intel model here. The chassis is unchanged from last year overall. There are a few tweaks here and there, but overall, you know, the general design of the chassis is the same as last year. That's a good thing. All metal design, super, super, super premium laptop. There is some, now it does come with this glacial white, which is obviously gorgeous. I am very biased towards white electronics, so that immediately places it in like the gorgeous category. However, you know, last year it was also a gorgeous laptop with that gun metal and I found it to be absolutely fantastic. Performance on the laptop is also outstanding. It's not gonna perform as well as like a 7i Pro with the same specifications because that has significantly more cooling. You're buying this laptop with the intention of getting something that is a more hybrid device. It's very, very, very thin for a gaming laptop. It's not overly heavy considering that it is a full 16 inch gaming laptop and it's all metal. So, I mean, it's actually not that heavy, all things considered. It also has a lot of other things that appeal to me as a user because I'm a hybrid user. Amazing trackpad, amazing keyboard. You have two screen options depending on what you want. Overall, you know, moving the ports from the back of the laptop. Some people were talking about that online. You're basically keeping the two ports that matter on the back, the HDMI and the power out. I don't want those on the sides of a laptop. I do not like that. So having them on the back is key. And that does allow them to basically shift up that cooling solution there and then allow for dual sodium, which for me, I find to be a considerable upgrade because for one thing, you know that your RAM are gonna run basically exactly the same. You can have two actual physical sodium modules in there and they're gonna run perfectly the same. And you can take this laptop to a higher amount of RAM if you wanna use it long-term, which you should because it's a really nice laptop, very premium, and it does have a lot of beefy specs in it. If you are a hybrid type user like me who does gaming, does professional tasks as well, Obviously, I do some creator stuff on it as well, and I do favor premium all-metal chassis. I like to have good speakers, like to have good screens, all of that. This is more or less a perfect laptop for me. I mean, you can always get more in it, but you'd have to pay more. It kind of just gets to the point where this laptop is a very, very premium option for a lot of people who are looking at what the laptop has to bring. There's not much that I could really think of to critique about the laptop. I mean, the price is, it's a brand new laptop price will come down, but even the intro price is not that bad, especially for all metal, beautiful screen, good cooling inside, dual sodium, dual RAM, glass trackpad, awesome speakers. It looks nice. I mean, what can I really critique about it? It's not free. I mean, you could maybe test out the Core Ultra with this laptop here instead of the 14th gen stuff, but I found that the Core Ultra stuff was a little bit quirky still because it's a brand new platform. Personally, I'm kind of happy that the Intel 14th gen is in here rather than Core Ultra. Not that I have anything wrong with the Core Ultra, but it's still kind of in like a beta format right now. So having, you know, the tested 14th gen that's based on 13th gen, I think was a smart move for Lenovo. So realistically, I mean, the only critique that I have of the laptop is that it's not mine. Uh, I would have to buy one rather than, you know, keeping this. I mean, maybe I could just not send it back to Lenovo, but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for an absolutely fantastic laptop and this is within your price bracket, I think it's an absolute win.